Good morning and welcome, welcome to our prayer and fasting time. Yes, we're in 2021 and we're looking forward to a great, amazing year. In fact, we're looking for revival. We're looking for healing. We're looking for deliverance. We're looking for miracles this yes, year. It's yeah. going to be a miracle mm. year for each and every one of us. And I encourage you to go online to victoryint.org and pick up your little free fasting and prayer brochure. That'll help you to be able to go through the fast. Gives you some great ideas and uh, some super scriptures uh, that you would like to have, I'm sure. And also we want to mention our books again, Diagnosis Healed. Uh, that's what the Lord says. And we believe that healing is of God. And this little booklet here gives you a lot of the healing scriptures. And you can pick that up at our bookstore at Victory, mm. uh, bookstore.org. Also, the three books we always bring out uh, during our fasting and prayer times, Releasing the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're not going to be uh, a nominal church. We're going to be Holy Spirit uh, filled uh, congregations. Amen. And then this one here, Fasting for Breakthrough and Revival, always a great book to help you through a fast. And this one, of course, uh, the famous bestseller, Praying God's Word. And the more we pray God's Word, the more we're going to see the results. And you know that the Lord really cares about what you care about. He yeah. said, I will perfect that which concerns you. So whatever is concerning you today, yeah. we want you to know that God wants to perfect that in your life. And so during this fast, believe for that. Believe that God is going to perfect those yeah. things that are concerning you. Yeah. Amen. And um, today, yeah, George. Yeah. N number four, we're giving you reasons why we fast, mm -hmm. you know, and the, and the benefits of fasting and seeking God. And so number four is this fasting because of sin and wrongdoing, mourning to stay the judgment of God and bring mercy. And of course, we want mercy from God, not judgment. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's times where sin brings judgment. The wages of sin is death and it does bring judgment. You, mm -hmm. you cannot sin and get away with it. But God's made an escape for us, and that is through repentance. We come boldly to the throne of grace, and we ask for mercy and grace to help in times of need. And God is, is faithful, he's, he's faithful, and he's not unjust, and he will hear us, and he will forgive our sins. But, uh, you know, you see this time and time again in Scripture where people had sinned, and then there was repentance. In fact, that's one thing that's true about all the heroes mm. of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, whether it's, whether it's Abraham, Noah, uh, uh, Samson, or, or, or any one of them throughout the whole heroes of faith in Hebrews 11, they were quick to repent when they sinned. They sinned. None of them are perfect. In fact, if you read it, it looked like the dirty dozen. But they all repented when they recognized their sin and they turned to God. Yeah. And so sin and wrong to, wrong to me, we want the mercy of God. You know, the one that stands out to me is Jonah. In the book of Jonah, you know, Jonah himself went the wrong way, didn't he? He went the wrong way. He knew what God wanted him to do, and he ran away from it. Got on the ship going in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. and then the whole ship ended up with problems because of Jonah. Right. They threw him over the board, and God had prepared a great fish for him. And uh, once he'd repented, then God spoke to the fish, and it vomited him out. And praise God, it didn't vomit him out in the middle of the Mediterranean. Mediterranean. He vomited him out right onto the beach there in, uh, in, the, in the Middle East, and he walked all the way to Nineveh, because this, this was God's intention. Go to Nineveh, he was told. That was the instructions. So he went to complete God's uh, assignment, went there, and got to Nineveh, and of course he didn't like the Ninevites. And so he went there, he, went, he ran away because he didn't like them. I don't like those people. And uh, God wants to save them, and I don't want that. And so he went there, and when he went to Nineveh, he just began to walk through the streets and said, repent, 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 because you've sinned. And the people repented. In fact, it says that everybody repented. <laughs> it says here that, um, it says, when Jonah preached repentance to the Ninevites, everyone fasted from the king to the cows, and the judgment of God was stayed and mercy was received. You look at that, God had determined he was going to destroy this whole people, 120,000 people. And uh, the interesting thing here, mm -hmm. when the people repented, true repentance, when they changed their behavior, God changed his mind. 
<laughs> and that can happen today. When we change our behavior, God can change his intentions. This is what I intended to do, but because of what you've done, I've changed my mind. You're going to get mercy. Isn't mm -hmm. that powerful? It's very powerful. 120,000 people. You've used Nineveh, Nineveh yeah. as an example of a city that repented. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like the fact that it went from the king to the cow. Everybody yeah, yeah. fasted. No one was allowed to eat for that whole day. <laughs> and they even put on sackcloth and ashes yeah. and prayed and God stayed the judgment. And I believe that that is a, a good story, a good account yeah. uh, to uh, remind us mm. of today because we need to pray for repentance for our nations. Yeah. Our nations have not been mm. pretty. And there's been a lot of corruption in leadership within our nations. And that leadership, I tell you, they need to repent from their wickedness yeah. so that mercy can prevail. And yeah. so I think today we need to remember mm. to really pray for the nation you're a part of mm. and then pray for the nation uh, next to you or any nation that God happens to lay upon your heart. Very important. And then we can see the mercy of God touch our land. Mm, that's right. If we will forsake our wicked ways, if we will pray, if we will seek the face of the Father, then he will forgive our sins, the Bible says, and he will heal our land. Yeah. And so we see the mercy yeah. coming forth from that. Yeah. But also, mm. as well as that, uh, this number four, um, it says here, fasting because of sin and wrongdoing. That could be sin and wrongdoing in your life, or it could be sin and wrongdoing in the life of those you love, those that are close to you. And you see them uh, doing wrong. You see them on drugs. You see them uh, alcoholics. You see them uh, living, uh, you know, adulterous uh, relationship, whatever it might be. You can pray and you can fast for them and see the mercy of God come on their life to the place where they can come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And uh, in that, I would like to bring you over to Isaiah, Isaiah 58 and verse 6, which is, by the way, George, a scripture I really used yeah. uh, when I was praying and fasting for you yeah. and for many others. Aren't you blessed? You're blessed oh, yeah. to have a I'm good blessed. wife that fasted and prayed yes, for you. I am. Amen. I know, yeah. Isaiah 58 yeah. and verse 6, it says, uh, isn't this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the cords of the yoke, uh, to set the oppressed free and to tear off every yoke? Wow. And that's from the Berean Bible, wow. to tear off every yoke. And when I read that, mm. oh, man, I think of so yeah. many people that we know, George, that yeah. we've been ministering to that are either on drug or uh, on drugs or they're, you know, working girls on the streets, you know, whatever it might be. But you know what? There's a yoke that's binding them. And we want to tear those yokes off and cause them to be 100% free. Uh, we've seen that, haven't we, George? Oh, absolutely. In so time many and lives, time again, yeah. Time and time again, yeah. we've seen where God has forgiven sin, where God has broken the yoke off of people's lives yeah. so that they can go free. Yeah, even our own lives, you know, things yes. that we were bound by, you yes. know. I mean, Absolutely. We never, I never received Christ till I was 30, and you were 28 or something like that, or 29. 29, but we were no angels. <laughs> Amen. And so there are always things in our life that need to be torn off of us. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So yokes can be turned off. Break torn the power off. of those things. Break the power of them yeah. over your life. So yeah. if you know someone today who's maybe in uh, in drugs or alcohol abuse, or what about uh, domestic violence? You know, somebody uh, that's living uh, with somebody that's abusive to them. I mean, whatever it might be, if you know anybody at all like that, and even if you don't know anybody, pray for them because they're out there. There are people that need to be set free. Amen. Mm, yeah. And we have the power to bring that freedom. We do. God gives us power over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. So that nothing by any means should harm should us. Should harm us. That's in Luke chapter 10. And the scripture I used last um, teaching was James 5 verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins one to another, your false steps, your offenses, confess them, pray for one another mm. that you might be healed and you might be restored. Yeah. And then the Amplified Bible goes on on James 5:16 and it says the heartfelt 
When you have a heart failure, you have a heart for these people that are bound, then we have the opportunity to set them free. Yeah. It says the heartfelt and the persistent prayer. Yeah. You know, George, in the old faith days when we had the old faith message, which was great, and yeah. it's kept us in the ministry. Is, yeah. But, you know, sometimes people think you just pray once and that's all there is to it. But this says persistent prayer. Ask and keep on asking. Ask and, and keep on asking. And knock and keep on knocking. And knock seek and, and keep, keep on, on seeking. Absolutely. And the door will be opened. A absolutely. And you get answers. And we need to point that out there yeah. because it's heartfelt and it's persistent prayer. So don't give up. Don't give in. Just keep praying. Keep believing God. Keep speaking it out there. And some days I know even when, yeah. you know, we're praying for people's salvation and praying for yeah. new church plants that we're doing, whatever it might be, many times we'll just go there before God and just lift our hands and begin to worship Him and thank Him for the answers. Yeah. Not necessarily praying the same thing over and over in repetition. I think sometimes too, you know, the, the reason with fasting, I mean, you, you want to get closer to God. You right. want to enter into His presence. Yes. And you know what? When you get into His presence, God reveals sin in your own life. Yes. And habits and bondages and things that we're not doing right. And He wants us to change them. You know, in Isaiah chapter... What is it? Where Isaiah chapter 6, I believe it is, where uh, where Isaiah was high and lifted up and he saw the Lord. Yes. And he saw the Lord and the angels cried, Holy, 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 holy. is the Lord God Almighty. And then, of course, he, in, in Isaiah, he said, Woe is me, I'm undone. I'm he a man of unclean lips. He saw himself. Oh, he saw himself. I mean, you cannot come into the presence of a holy God without feeling your need for repentance. And he saw his need for repentance. Woe is me. I'm a man of, notice that, unclean lips, speaking wrong words, speaking against God's mm -hmm. word, speaking against a people you should be honoring. And then, and then, uh, and then he said, and, the, and, and, and I dwell amongst the people with unclean lips. Mm. And then God touched his lips and cleansed him. That's and then powerful. from there, then he was, and then God said, who'll go for me? Who <laughs> shall I send? Yeah. And he said, here I am, send me. But he couldn't go until he'd first recognized that sin and repented of it and realized his repentance. And then God said, go. And he went. George, I think a great deal of things um, begin with repentance. Oh, yeah. It yeah. just begins there. Yeah. In fact, you know, going into prayer, we can often pray, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for wrong words that I've spoken. Forgive me for mm. things that I've done mm. or things that I've said or whatever it might mm. be. Ask the Lord to forgive you for the known and the mm. unknown sin. Yeah. Sometimes there's sins of omission. omission. We just don't even realize that we've done that. Mm. And we've hurt someone's feeling yeah. or, or yeah. that kind of thing. We can always ask for that I mean, uh, forgiveness right up front yeah. before yeah. you start going in, you know, Lord, do this for me, do that for me. Yeah. We can first of all ask forgiveness. Well, even the whole idea of communion is communion. We come into the presence of God, mm -hmm. and, you know, and to get our sins forgiven. Yes. You know, and we want God to forgive our sins and cleanse us. Mm -hmm. And of course, that happens when we come into communion with God. We want forgiveness and, and, uh, and rest, restoration so that we can become the people God's called us mm -hmm. to be and do what he's called us to do. You know, and for the people today, Hazel, we should just pray that. Yes, but I'd like to encourage the people also. Uh, you mentioned communion, George. Yeah, yeah. It's very important to yeah. take communion. It is, yeah. I know that there are some uh, churches that don't take communion mm. very often. Yeah. But I think communion is important. And I think during this fast, each of us can take communion at home. Just even you and I yeah, taking do that, communion yeah. together, yeah. we do it. Yeah. And that is something that everybody can do. And it's done in remembrance of yeah. what God has done for us, yeah. what Jesus has yeah. done. Amen. So let's pray for everyone no, okay. and believe for yeah. a great uh, week of fasting. So, Father, week. we just thank you for those that are viewing here today. And, mm -hmm. Father, our churches right across the nation and the yes. church as a whole. And, Lord, we're just believing, Lord, you'd grant repentance. And be merciful, Lord, I pray. We come boldly to your throne of grace. And yes, we ask we do, for Lord. mercy. We do, and we ask for grace to help yes. in times of need. And, Lord, you know all the needs that are out there even uh, in the world today. And I, I pray, dear Lord, that those needs, Father, would be met by your power when people seek you. And I thank you, Lord, for the saints seeking you. And 
and then mm-hmm. seeking repentance and then receiving your mercy and mercy your grace to help grace. in every time of need, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and relational. And we say thank you for it in the wonderful and powerful and mighty name of Jesus. And in remember, Jesus, Jesus is your healer, he's your deliverer, and he's your miracle-working God. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>